Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. Today I'm gonna get started actually getting this thing calibrated and tuned up and ready to have a blade on there and maybe take a slice out of this log here. We'll see. <laughs> it is really cold today. The current temperature is three degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, crazy cold. So we'll see how far I get today. Um, I still have to go ahead and go around and install like all the adjuster bolts back onto the, um, the wheel bearing things and I need to add washers on stuff. Uh, I left a lot of stuff off as I was working here because I've been removing these things pretty frequently so you know washers would just get lost <laughs> most likely. So I've left them off up until this point so I'm going to start going around and doing a little bit of uh, house cleaning and prep work and then I can get into actually aligning the wheels. <laughs> this one I can leave on. The drive side has to come off though. I need to get access to the bearing bolts. Oh boy. Ugh. Okay, so first thing to replace these plywood spacers with actual washers and lock washers. I use these spacers on here because these are fine threaded bolts and I don't have a inch and an eighth uh, socket. So I was threading these things all on by hand and with a wrench. Actually, they're kind of difficult to turn by hand. So I have to use a wrench. So I use the spacers to take up the extra length of the bolts. So I don't have to thread them all the way in. And I go faster. Whew. These bolts are about a half an inch too long and they're three quarter by whatever the fine threads are, I don't remember, 18 threads per inch maybe? Something like that. So that's like 12 less turns I had to make when installing these things temporarily. Whew. Oh. So I really didn't get that far on that frigid day. Uh, after maybe like 20 minutes or so, my hands would be frozen and I had to go inside and warm up for like another 20 minutes to half an hour. So it didn't really end up being all that productive. But luckily that same day, my wife went into labor and my son Max was born and the temperatures plummeted after that day even further. So this kind of worked out really well. It's a few days later, about five days later actually, and the temperatures are back up in the mid 30s and it's supposed to be up in this range for a few days before dropping again to more of a winter thing. So I figured this is the perfect time to do a really strong push to get this thing like running. <laughs> so I already have all my adjustment bolts reinstalled and the first thing I'm gonna work on is this, uh, the drive side. So the first thing I wanna work on over here is figuring out the angle for the shaft. And in theory, the angle doesn't really matter. Uh, as the blade comes off of here, it doesn't really matter what the blade is doing in this direction because the blade guides are going to correct that and get it set perfectly to the bed. But I still want to get it relatively close. And at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm able to shim either the front or the back or maybe both of these bearings because I have this three bearing set up here. The center bearing I'm not planning to use at the moment. It's there just in case. Um, but if this plate that these bearings are mounted to has a uh, bow in it like this, if I were to tighten down the front and back bearings, that's going to cause the shaft to have either a lot of stress on it or it's going to cause that shaft to bend as it comes through the center bearing. So I don't want the center bearing to be touching the plate. So if I can get a shim under either one of these or both, that would be ideal. So I'm going to be using the beam as sort of my reference point for both sides just to make this process a little bit easier. And I'm going to use my angle gauge here to see if the mounting plate is uh, parallel to the beam. So if I zero this out on the beam and I put it on the plate, that's good there. In the back it's good. So the plate is actually nice and straight to the beam. So what I think I'll do is I'll put a shim under both the front and the back at the same thickness and I'll keep it at the same kind of orientation. Um, I can do that without too much of an issue because the idle side is technically lower than this side. So by dropping this side, it'll be more in line. But again, it doesn't really matter because those blade guys are gonna do all the work of getting that blade nice and perfect. So I have my packet of shim stock here and I think I'll use uh, six thou 
for this. I think that should work out just fine. So I'm just gonna mark on here with my little marker just so I know how big of a piece I need to make to basically just encompass the foot of this bearing and where the hole needs to be for the bolt to go through. This would be obviously easier if I did this before I put these on the saw, but you know, that would make too much sense. All right, I'm gonna go in the shop and make these, or cut them or whatever. Okay, so I have all the shims and bolts installed and I do have some play here, which is good. That means that the plate might not have bowed or at least these shims have taken up enough space where the bottom of this bearing isn't contacting this anymore and causing any kind of issue. I'm just gonna put the bolts in here, not tighten them down, um, just so it doesn't like rock around as the sawmill is being used and so I don't lose those bolts. Okay, so now I need to get the wheel on here and set the position of the shaft uh, in this direction here using the adjuster bolts. So let me get this wheel up here. Ugh, it's filthy. This is actually pretty good already. Uh, I got Maybe it's off by a sixteenth. I have about an inch, well, maybe a little over an inch, 30 second over an inch on this side, and on this side, like right at the inch mark. So this needs to go this way a little bit. It's moving, that's good. Glad that actually works. So I think I'm gonna do is get my ruler on, it'll be a little bit easier to see. It's got more graduations on it. This is extremely hard because of the crown on this thing. Inch and a quarter. So this needs to go in some more. So I can move just a touch more. Yeah, just a touch. That looks pretty good. Inch and three sixteenths on both sides. So now what I'll do is lock down um, all four of those um, bearing bolts, and then I'll lock down the adjustment bolts as well with those locking nuts. And that's the wind blowing the sawmill away. Now I can already tell this is angled a little bit, so I'm just going to start off by adjusting that a little bit. It's heavy. All right. Ah, ah. All right, let me get my ruler again. Inch and nine sixteenths. So it's got to go back, most likely. This is really out here. This side is inch and five sixteenths. So it's got to tip that way, 
and probably go back about a quarter inch or so. So I need to tip uh, that back corner so the whole thing goes this way. All right, got an inch and a half. We have inch and a little over a quarter. So I gotta keep tipping it this way. All right, we're down at inch and almost three eighths. A little proud of that. And then this side we're at inch and a little under three eighths. Okay, we got inch and three eighths. And we have inch and three eighths. So that's parallel to the beam now. That's good. So what we really need is inch and three sixteenths. So I gotta go back now that's three sixteenths of an inch. So I should be able to back these off. What a distance that I need. Let's say that and then pull this whole assembly back. That move? I can't tell. Let me loosen these adjuster bolts here so that it'll slide. Okay, or not. No, there's still, there's still room in the slots. So, just a little tight. Inch and a quarter. And on this side, let's see. A little out over an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna come back a little further, about another 16th or so. I'll lose these some more. I think I'll set these to go past it. And then I can use these bolts to shove it forward until it's the right distance. Got an inch and a little under a quarter on this side. I have inch and three sixteenths on this side. So that's pretty darn close. So I'll back it off a little more, I guess. Now I got inch and eighth on this side and inch and three sixteenths on this side. So that's perfect. I'll get it parallel again and then I'll shove it forward until it's the same distance off the beam as the drive side. In theory, all I should have to do is just tighten up these adjusters again. Inch and three sixteenths. And on this side, inch and an eighth. So I need to take this side out. Inch and three sixteenths. Inch and three sixteenths. Nice. Okay, so that lined up really well. So I'm gonna lock in the back adjusters to set the in and out position. Make sure it doesn't move. Now, last thing I gotta do is the tilt. And if I can just sight down here, looks like the idle wheel is tipped back that way right now. So I'm gonna set the wheel with the spoke pretty much uh, vertical set the angle finder on here and zero it out. All right, so that's at zero right now. Put it on here, bring this up to vertical. We're out by about one degree. So in theory, if I can get that uh, wheel to read zero, they'll be in the perfectly, or in the same plane. So on the underside here, on each of the four corners, I tap for a couple of jack screws. Half a degree is pretty good for now. One thing in here that's gonna affect this is the rock in the idle mount. As you can see, I'll take it up to 0.9 and drop it back to a half a degree. So what I wanna do now is get a blade on here, put some tension on it so I know how this idle mount's gonna be sitting, and then I can adjust the tracking with those bolts.
nice. I guess I removed just enough material from that idle area to get the blade to go on fairly easily. Uh, next, I want to get these blade guys out of here. The guys that are on here right now are actually for two inch wide blades. That's I need really to swap on. these out for the, um, the one and a half inch wide blade I'm using right now. And having those out of the way will allow me to keep make sure those aren't affecting the tracking of the blade on the wheels. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply a little bit of tension to the blade, just enough to get this droop out of here, and then I'll start to get the tracking figured out. It's moving. Yeah, that's uh, one more. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's nowhere near fully tension, but at least that little bit of slop is out of there. So now if I spin one of the wheels, see which way the blade wants to track on the wheels. Now what I want to have happen is I want the teeth to be tracking on the front part of the blade or on the front part of the wheel. So the teeth are actually off the wheel and that'll prevent the steel wheels from uh, messing up the set in the teeth. Now, since my wheels don't have tires, um, that's why I have to do that. Otherwise, if the wheel had a tire, the tires are a little softer and they won't allow the teeth to lose their set. Okay, so it is tracking a little too centered, so I gotta mess with the tracking on the idle wheel to get this blade to come forward a little bit. But it is on there though which is pretty, pretty exciting. If I turn it the correct way, let's see if it does anything. Okay, it's actually working. So if I turn it the correct way, you can see the teeth, here, I'll bring the camera around. You can see if I turn it the correct way, counterclockwise, it actually settles really well with the teeth off the wheels. That's looking pretty good, actually. I might not have to mess with the tracking yet until I get this thing up to speed a little bit and get some distance on the band. Because right now it's pretty much near perfect. Wow. I thought that was gonna be a lot more difficult to get correct. <laughs> this is cool. I guess next I get the motor hooked up and we can try spinning this blade at a slow RPM just to make sure the tracking's all right and make some fine adjustments if needed. That seems like a good next step. So I have the VFD hooked back up to the motor and now I'm gonna go ahead and tension the belt. To tension the belt on here, it's really easy since this base plate I got has a built-in tensioner. It's basically a platform that slides uh, to the left and right with the adjustment bolts on the end here. And to lock it in place, first I'll tighten this lower nut, which will lock the platform in place so it can't slide to the left and right anymore. And then I can tighten down the top nut, which will hold the motor down to this base plate. I do have some lock nuts that I'm gonna put on here, but for right now, this should work just fine. It actually spins. This is pretty exciting. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty excited. All right, so I let that spin for a few minutes and the tracking still looks pretty good. I'm not sure if this, if the idle side here is moving forward or not. It looks like it might have moved forward a little bit, but I'll watch that as we start to speed things up a little bit and adjust it if necessary. 
So next I think I'm going to do is fully tension the blade and then we'll do some more tracking testing. Um, so I have my tension meter attached on the blade and we'll start pumping up this hydraulic ram. Uh, one thing I was actually concerned about was the hydraulic ram settling, um, but I left it tensioned overnight. There wasn't much tension on it, but uh, it didn't move at all, so we'll see if that's an issue in the future. Okay, so I have the tension meter installed on the blade and I follow the directions in the, uh, in the box here of how to install it and set it up. So it's currently set at zero right now and there is just a tiny bit of tension on there right now. So I guess it's not too big of a deal. So what I'm gonna do is start pumping the ram until the tension meter gets to about 18,000 PSI, which is what the manufacturer recommends for this blade. 10. is about 14. And it says to get an actual reading, you're supposed to tap the blade. And that should be about right. And if I look at the pressure gauge on the pump, the hydraulic fluid in the pump is at kind of hard to read, but almost two and a half thousand PSI. Right around there, just under two and a half thousand PSI. So at this point, I need to figure out, well, just for more for curiosity's sake, I need to figure out what the size of the cylinder is on the ram so I can actually calculate the pound force being applied through this tensioning mechanism. Um, I'm not sure what the end of the cylinder is. All right, so let's spin it up again. So it takes a little more power going this time now it's tensioned. Yeah, it's tracking off the wheel now. Okay. So I have to adjust the tracking because it's definitely coming off. So it used to be the teeth were just hanging off and now it's really starting to um, track off the wheel. So adjustment time. All right, so I've messed with the tracking about as much as I can right now. What I'm realizing is actually I don't have enough uh, travel in my mount to get this thing to twist far enough to get this blade tracking far enough back on the wheel. However, I don't think it's that bad right now. It's a little further off than I probably would like. It needs to go back about a quarter inch more, but I think for milling up some small stuff, this should be just fine. And eventually sometime I'll take off this idle mount and elongate the holes or widen up the holes a little bit so they can have a little more travel. But uh, let me turn this thing back on. I'll speed it up a little bit. That's running at four and a half hertz. I don't know what the RPM is. But it is tracking really nicely. It's not moving anywhere on the wheel, so that's good. This is under tension as well right now. And they're putting up a shed next door. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way this is tracking and running right now. So next I'm gonna focus my attention on getting the play guide set. All right, so I got the guides installed and I probably should have known better because this is going so well. The first problem I'm having today is these guides aren't, uh, I guess it's just not working out with the height adjustment. Um, at this point, the bolts that came with the, uh, the guides are a little too long. On the top side, the push is down far enough. And I have a shorter bolt here that I'm using, but it's not quite long enough to give it enough travel. So the guide is just barely touching the blade right now. It needs to actually be putting downward pressure down the blade. So instead of running out and trying to buy a new bolt, I'll just go ahead for now and just use it as is. This is not a big log, um, but right now these guides, since they're not actually putting any pressure down, they're not controlling the blade at all, so it can do whatever it wants to in the cut. But again, this is a pretty small log, not too worried about that. The other thing I'm having problems with is this one over here. This one's actually too far forward. Um, 
So what I did there is there's a washer in behind the roller and I took this inside and ground this down a little bit just to make it a little smaller and that provides some more room and mo move the roller back a little bit. Uh, it's still rubbing along the back here, but I think it's good enough to at least give this thing a try. So next I'm gonna throw the guards on the mill and see if this thing will run at full speed and we'll try a test cut. What's that noise? The fan. Oh, okay, okay. I'm motor. Yeah. That should be a one six. One six? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wait, wait. Full speed. Ah. Awesome job. Super job. Something happened. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. It was good. I don't know if it cuts yet. Oh, it's good. It's good cut. It's good cut, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah, things make a noise. Huh? It'll be a lot quieter when that fan's not making noise. Yeah. It's spinning the fine, just fine. It's just making noise. It's, got, it's just rubbing. So we ended up making that test cut and I did live stream that and I did release an edited version of that as well. Instead of just throwing that in here and making this video any longer, I'll leave links to those down below and you can take a look at either the live stream or the edited version to see all that fun excitement of that first cut. But as you can see, I've been using the mill to cut some small stuff and it's been working extremely well for that. Uh, the one thing I still have to do is adjust the blade guides. What I have to do there is I'm actually going to modify the mounts so the blade guides will be able to come down further and actually go back uh, towards the back of the mill a little bit more as well because the blade isn't quite tracking still to the, uh, the right spot on the wheels and the blade guides are going to restrict me from being able to track it correctly and then they're still too high. So whenever I get through some of the small stuff, which is working just fine for right now, before I tackle the big stuff, we'll be fixing the guides <laughs> but uh, this thing has been working really well and I'm just super thrilled that it actually works <laughs> so thank you as always for watching I greatly appreciate it if you have any questions or comments on the setup procedure which I kind of made up as I went please feel free to leave me a comment I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have and until next time <laughs> happy woodworking